Hi guys, it's Dr. Elawad from steppingaround.com. We'll be continuing with our resident macrophages in this video. And this is probably going to be the last video that I'm going to do on resident macrophages for the meantime, so that we can really start to focus more on how our macrophages uh, function during infection and inflammation and the various different interactions that occur, occur between the other white blood cells and macrophages, which is really the more important stuff so that we can really start to build up a nice, clear picture of our immune system. And once we have this nice, clear picture and the solid um, grasp of what goes on, we'll be able to fully understand it. And once we fully understand it, memorizing all those little facts and details that are, are difficult to remember, is going to be so much easier so that's the basic aim of these videos really it's to focus on understanding so in this video we're going to go ahead and have a look a quick look at our lungs and the immune defenses of the lungs and our alveolar macrophages so our lungs are fascinating in the sense that there are they're, they're a major boundary between our body and the outside world and every day your lungs are exposed to over eight and a half thousand liters of air from the environment give or take and with each tidal breath that you take which is on average 500 milliliters it contains dust and bacteria viruses and various other potentially dangerous elements so they need to be dealt with and our lungs need to be protected and the defense mechanisms need to be strong so as to prevent these microbes and other potential pathogens from entering the body through them at will. So how are these lungs protected? How are they protected? And as you'll see, it's mainly the innate immune system that protects and prevents infection. And in this video, I'll be focusing more on the innate side of things. So where does it all begin? Well, you take your deep breath once you inspirate the air passes through your nose if you're breathing through your nose and most large particles are actually trapped during nasal inspiration because our nasal mucosa is lined with fine hairs and columnar ciliated epithelium which covers the mucosal surface and this functions so as to trap large particles between the hairs and it's also very mucousy so all these particles, they get trapped up here and they're prevented from entering further into the airways. But some particles or some pathogens are able to make it through and get down further down our airway. And what happens if we have a large particle that comes through and makes it down into the throat and past the throat? Well, it triggers off our cough reflex, which as you've probably learned by now, it just basically pushes stuff back out into the environment. But what happens if these particles make it past our nasal mucosa and they manage to avoid getting thrown out of the body by the cough reflex? In the lower respiratory tract, you have this epithelium. And this epithelium is very characteristic in that it has cilia all the way up and down it. And it also has these mucus glands. And these mucus glands, remember, are the goblet cells. And what these goblet cells do really is secrete this mucus, which comes out to line these epithelium cells. So what happens is when this particle comes through, the idea is that it lands on the mucosa, gets stuck, and then your cilia transports it all the way back up towards your mouth and out of your body. Now this is what you call your mucociliary escalator. Okay, But what happens if a particle or pathogen makes it even further down. Where will it go next? Well, it goes on to reach our terminal bronchioles. And remember, at the end of our terminal bronchioles, we have our alveoli. And just a quick review of our alveoli while we're here, may as well do it. Remember that you have your type 1 pneumocyte, which is right here. You see this very thin stretched out cell it's a simple squamous alveolar cell and these are the sites of gas exchange if you notice right here you have a capillary which is in very close proximity and this is to function in or to facilitate the exchange of gases between the capillary and 
or alveolar lumen. And then you also have your type 2 pneumocytes. And remember your type 2 pneumocytes, they produce surfactant. Now, this surfactant, it decreases surface tension to prevent the alveoli from collapsing, but it also has antimicrobial properties. It's quite a hostile place for pathogens to survive. And recently they found out that this uh, surfactant actually contains two proteins which are very important towards our innate defenses. And these proteins are SPA and SPD. And they found out that these proteins actually opsonize bacteria in the sense that they attach to the surface of the bacteria. They attach to various sugars located on the surface of the bacteria. And this facilitates opsonization. And now because our bacteria is opsonized thanks to our SPA and SPD, it makes them very susceptible to phagocytosis. And who's going to phagocytose these bacteria here? It's going to be our macrophage. And the interesting thing about our macrophages or our alveolar macrophages, alveolar resident macrophages, is that their activity is relatively high compared to our other macrophages and this is because they're located at one of the major boundaries between the body and the outside world. So they're working very hard, they're constantly scavenging and phagocytosing bacteria and not only just bacteria but dust particles, particularly carbon particles, especially um, you know people who live in cities or areas where there's a high level of pollution say for example mine workers or anywhere where the air is heavily polluted these macrophages are working very hard to phagocytose all particles that come in particularly these carbon particles now once they phagocytose these carbon particles they actually stay in the macrophages black granules now these black carbon granules like i said are common in smokers lungs and you'll find them also in people who live in cities or heavily polluted areas. But all in all, apart from that, our macrophages in the alveolar, alveolar macrophages are pretty much similar to our other macrophages in the sense that they express your CD14 receptors, your CD40 receptors. They also have your toll-like receptors which are your pathogen recognition receptors and we'll talk further about these separate about these different receptors in another video um, to to get a nice understanding because you'll hear a lot about the different types of CD receptors and their interactions with one another so we'll have a be we'll, we'll be having a closer look at that in a further video but in all the regards our alveolar macrophage is similar in the sense that even from the structure can see the ruffled membrane, the nucleus, circular nucleus, as well as the vesicles and vacuoles that are present in the cytoplasm. And bearing in mind quickly that our alveolar macrophage also comes from our circulating blood monocyte. So our monos monocyte is moving around in the blood. Once it, once it reaches the lungs, it goes off and differentiates into our alveolar macrophage. And that's pretty much it for the resident macrophages for now. In the next series of videos, we're going to be having a closer look at how our macrophages function specifically during infection and inflammation. And we'll also be having a look at their interactions with other cells, how these macrophages interact and communicate with our various other white blood cells specifically our cytotoxic white blood cells cytotoxic t cells and we'll be we'll be getting a nice picture and understanding how all these things tie in together and it'll just go towards helping us build that nice clear picture of our immune system okay thanks guys i'll see you in the next video